I'm, I'm in the booth and I'm like, wait a second, what? <laughs> You're not going to have a voice. And I was like, probably right. But I just took it. I was going to do it. <laughs> do it. You don't get scripts ahead of time so that you don't leak it. They look it up. Oh, you're right. That's what they said. And this. So that means I'm the airhead. <laughs> Around with my left hand, which was awkward at first, but I got so used to it. You know, I'm like, oh, okay. Uh. Now, coverage like no other. Bringing you videos from the event floor. You're watching convention coverage. What are we doing? We're just answering. Is it just us? Yeah, it's just, yeah. We, we can get them to ask questions, and you and I can wax philosophically about whatever. And Perfect. Right on. Uh, John, you're one of my uh, favorite BAs of all time. Oh, thank you so um, much. I appreciate that, too. I, I, I love almost every single character you voice. Almost. I, <laughs> I just finished, I, I finished, uh, in prep for this, I finished part one of JoJo. Oh, yeah? Jonathan Joe starts the man. <laughs> He didn't last long enough for me. <laughs> uh, but uh, my question is that uh, what characters in your career were some of your favorites to voice? Oh, gosh. Um, there's so many of them. Uh, Jonathan is one. I enjoyed him a lot. Uh, let's see. Ichigo. Um, well, I mean, I could go down the list. Uh, let's see. Vash. For love, sure. Love Vash. Lelouch. I love, Isaiah. I, I watched some Trigun and I'm just Trigun. like. I Trigun, love, they could have kept going. I love Trigun. Um, I, I don't know. There's so many of them, really. Um, it's easier for me to tell you which ones I don't like. But Oh, which ones don't well, we don't. Like? Let's not do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying it would be easier for me to point those yeah. out. Um, but I, I, there's so many of them, you know, if, if you go to my table, basically, if you see the char characters there, those are some of my favorites. It's stay not strong. all of them, but it's some of my favorites. All right. Thanks, and stay strong, Lee Louch. <laughs> Thank you. I like all your buttons. You collecting those? Yeah? You go around each con and get more? Nice. Um, I actually had a question. Uh, I heard that Bleach may be coming back for the Thousand Year Blood War arc. Are you excited to play a more older and more returned Ichigo? Well, of course. <laughs> um, and uh, October is, mm -hmm. uh, is the date that was given. So I don't know if that's October. It's going to start up in Japan or if we're going to have it at the same time. I, I have no idea. But of course... I'm excited for that. Um, it was a little bittersweet the way they ended it, you know, so I, I cannot wait to get back in those shoes for sure. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot more to do. Yeah. Uh, have like, you read the manga? Yes, no, I so have. You, you know, it's, yeah, there's a lot. It's extreme yeah. for the ending. Yeah. So you saw the trailer too then, I'm assuming, right? Yeah. For the new stuff? Yeah. The, the animation looks great. Extremely. I'm so hyped for the animation. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. No problem. Yeah, I, I can't wait, you guys, really. Um, I, I hope it... Uh, we haven't started anything. Um, and, you know, so, so maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. They might replace us. Who knows? Hopefully not, but... Uh, no, but they can't. They can't do that. <laughs> well, thank you for the support. But, uh, yeah, I, I'd love to. Yeah. Is there, like, an instrument that you don't know how to play that you ever just get, like... Let me try this out. <laughs> um, oh, there's all sorts of instruments that, you know, I mean, I tinker with a bunch of things. Like guitar is the main thing I play. Um, I, would, I would love to be able to play like the piano really well, but I, I can't, you know, I mean, it's just like stuff that I come up with. Um, I just know chords and stuff, you know, and that's, that's uh, uh, I guess that would be one. Um, that's cool, though. So you saw I Shine back in the day? Yeah, I have great memories playing at SAC Anime. Um, a lot of them. Really, really great. We, we had such a wonderful time throughout the years coming here. And, uh, yeah, hopefully uh, in the future we'll get to bring the, the new band over. So that would be pretty sweet. Thanks for taking the time to come out here and uh, answer these questions. Uh, my uh, pleasure. I love the versatility that you have delivering in any type of your roles, from the dual, both stoic and chaotic, that is Ichigo and his uh, Zantan Pakto, to 
the goofy but somewhat serious when he needs to be, um, Vash the Stampede and Trigun, to some of the even like lesser known roles, um, like the crazy hairpin trigger, like unpredictable vampire from Heat Guy J, the gangster oh. crime lord. <laughs> like that was ridiculous, just seeing him dangling a grenade in his finger, like offhand, and as he's holding a conversation, you have no idea what he's gonna do. To even some of the more subtle and like inquisitive natures like Hajime Hinata in Duncan Rampa, Goodbye to Despair. My question for you is, when you were doing the cold reading for Hajime throughout the entire series, which character's death hit you the hardest? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, see, this, this is a little tricky because my experience of that game is very different from yours. Um, <laughs> Whereas you get to play it and live there and, and really see the world the way it should be seen. Um, I saw, I didn't even know the name of the game. It was a top secret thing. I think they had like maybe a D and a G or something and a two by it. So I had no idea. You know, they, they keep a lot of those things top secret. Hmm. And uh, it was a script, and, um, which was mostly just my lines. Like it didn't have any other character lines, you know, or any other character. So I'd have to always ask, wait, what's happening here? Why am I saying this? Um, because of time, we, we barrel through it, you know? So it's like I get it done in four hours. And then I was at a show, I was at an, uh, a convention and somebody pushes the game across the table to me and I look at it and I'm like, I don't, I don't think I'm in this. And so I pass it back and they're like, no, 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 you're in this. And I'm like, I think I know what I've done, and this, this one I don't think I did. And I'm like, no, no, you're in it. And they're like, I pulled it up online, and they showed it to me. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, what's your name? <laughs> you just happened to find out you're the protagonist? Yeah, and so I, did, I had no idea, honestly. And then so, so then I had to go back and, and, and try to find it online and, and see little bits and pieces of it. Of course, I, you know, we went through the anime eventually, but, but at the time, I, I really had no idea. So for me, it's a bit more of a blur. And I didn't get to experience what you've experienced. It's the same way for me. Well, it's a little different, but with Demon Slayer, because Giyu is not there throughout all the different things that are going on. And I did a panel with the other Demon Slayer voice actors, and people are asking all these questions about blood this, blood that, demon pat what, and I'm like, I have no idea what you guys are talking about. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to watch this. And uh, thankfully, my daughter wanted to watch it, right? And so I watched it with her. And she loves the show. I think it's a great show, too. Um, but then I got to finally see it. And so I haven't been able to truly experience the game this, the way that you've experienced it. So for me, it, it's, I don't have a good answer for you, <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> unfortunately. But it was just like a really heartbreaking performance, like right at the end of it, where you're like, literally, you can hear the voice cracking. Like, we feel that when we hear you emote that type of, like, response or that monologue that you deliver it's just so impactful and it shows like a credit to your work and what you do i appreciate that i, I had a great director tony oliver um who with with any of those things anything that i do it really anything i do i i, I really my, my biggest thing is to make sure that i feel it like the character feels it because if i don't then you're gonna hear it and, and so as long as I have that same emotion going on that this character should be going through, then you're going to go, okay, that, that feels right, you know. Because um, I've heard, I mean, you, you've heard plenty of anime before that take you completely out of it when you hear a certain thing. And it's like, okay, let me switch to the Japanese, you know. Um, <laughs> I've done it too, you know. And, and so I, I, at least if it's my character, I want to make sure that I'm not phoning it in, um, you know. And so that, I mean... I am grateful that you felt that way because I, I really try to sell it uh, in anything that I do. Um, and some people are like, ah, oh, it's stupid. You don't want to, you know, like even the screaming, like I let it all out. And, and people are like, you know, there are ways to do it to where you can control it. And I'm like, yeah, but then you can hear that it's controlled, you know? And I want people to feel like that hurt, you know? Because then you go, ah, like, oh, okay. Like Orga, I don't know, who's seen... Iron Blood Orphans, you know, yeah. Um, so, so in that one, um, Orga the char I, is a character I don't usually get cast as, you know. Um, it's a, a little bit deeper of a, a voice, a tone. And so I'm like, oh boy, this is strange. Um, but I knew that he's been through wars and whatever else. And so I thought, 
Every, if I go to work, it's like 30 minutes to an hour to get to work. And so what I did was I would scream and shout like I'm in battle, you know, any street sign or whatever I saw. So once I got to work, I was just ruined. Um, but then, <laughs> and then maybe you can't even tell, you know, when I do the character. But I wanted, I wanted to feel it so that it seemed like I had to force through that. And so that you kind of hear that texture that it feels like, oh, this guy's been through some things, um, it, it's kind of weird, I know, and, and so I mentioned this at, a, at another panel, and somebody's like, that's stupid, you're not going to have a voice, and I was like, you're probably right, but that fe felt right for me in that character, you know, um, I'm talking too much about that, I think, but, but anyways, I appreciate you uh, playing the game, and, and I'm so glad that you actually can pick up on that stuff. Yeah, thank you so much. That's, that's the behind-the-scene magic information, man, that's the good <laughs> stuff. I wrecked my voice on purpose. I did this for you. <laughs> it's good to see you again. Um, I've been sitting on this question for two years, because last time you were here, you had to miss the Devil May Cry panel, and I had two different questions for one for Bleach, one for Devil May Cry. So I wanted to ask, because I've been curious, um, so you voiced Nero and Ichigo in Devil May Cry and Bleach, respectively, and I can't remember voice the voice actor's name, because I didn't look it up, uh, but the guy that plays Orihime and Kyrie are also the same person. And yes. those characters in each respective series sort of had the same dynamic uh, as far as relationships go. So I was curious, was that purely coincidental when they were doing the English dub for Devil May Cry or whichever one they did? For, yeah, it would be Devil May Cry because it would have been four. Um, or was that like someone in the casting was like, oh, hey, I know Bleach. We already got Johnny or we already got her. Let's bring them in and see what happens. It's just coincidence. I kind yeah. of had a feeling it was just coincidental. Yeah, I pointed that out too. I think I posted that a long time ago. Um, you know, even he's, he's got a big sword too, you know? Um, so, yeah, I, I, uh, I remember that thinking that's, that's pretty funny, but it's, yeah, coincident. Well, thank you for clearing that up. It's been burning my head. And I, yeah, I'm glad you're about as excited for Bleach coming back as a lot of us are, because it's good. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> Was it fate? Was it destiny? <laughs> I should have had a better answer for that, huh? <laughs> You've been waiting two years for it. I forgot to say that, I, that your new music is really wonderful. Oh, thank you. And, and kind of piggybacking on what um, the other guys just said, I can really feel you trying to sell your, what you're feeling and what you're thinking in your music as well as in your acting. And um, uh, I don't watch a whole lot of dubs um, my, anymore. Um, my dubs come in clips here and there. Um, but I mean, all I need is a couple of lines from you and I'm just like, all right, I'm good. I'm recharged. I don't need to watch the rest. You know? um, you're, you're just, you're an amazing person. Oh, thank you. And uh, so I, I just wanted to know uh, really uh, what made you want to get so involved in acting. And performing. Oh gosh, um, I don't know. Uh, I, you know, I, I've always been kind of a more reserved, quiet, shy kid growing up. Pretty. Um, yeah, I'm a frog. Yeah, you know. <laughs> uh, I was. I mean, they wrote that character based around me. You know, I got picked on a lot and was super insecure. Um, and I remember I was doing this class in, in um, what was it, high school, I guess, um, intro to speech. And uh, was it high school? It might have been middle, middle school, uh, intro to speech. And we did a play, and I'd never done anything like that. And the character I had to play was like a superhero, but he was a bit goofy. Um, and uh, so I, and I was so like, it, the like out of my comfort zone completely. Um, but I felt like I, I'm basically to myself, I'm like, well, if I don't do this character like completely opposite of who I am, then it's just going to be trash and, you know, they'll hate me. You know, <laughs> nobody that's watching, will, it'll just be embarrassing. Um, so I just went for it. And w when I did that, um, I w people were laughing and cheering in different places and I'm like well, that's really interesting I can connect to people by something like this um, and so I think somehow that at least in my head is maybe where it first started 
Mm-hmm. Um, now, I studied martial arts, and I've always felt like um, I could pick up that martial art, whatever martial art, pretty quickly. Um, and so I felt like there was a talent there that I needed to use. Um, so that kind of went hand in hand then with that. And then fortunately for me, uh, there, there's an article there looking for new Power Rangers. And so I'm like, I'm going out for that. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know. It was really just I, every step of the way, it was like, I guess that's what I'm going to do now. Um, you know, and then, then I was on Power Rangers. Then I wasn't on Power Rangers. And then I was like, you didn't know what I was going to do because I couldn't get a job for a few years. You know, back then there was like no roles for a half Asian. Um, and uh, coming off of Power Rangers, it was frowned upon. You know, they didn't, they didn't like Power Rangers. And so I couldn't get a job, and I had, you know, I was virtually homeless, living with whoever would let me stay with them. I had a broken cot, two trash bags full of clothes, and I had a guitar. And I was like, well, um, I guess I'll learn how to play the guitar. <laughs> and so I, I played, you know, the guitar. I taught myself how to sing and play, and then I started a band called I Shine. And that was the next thing I was like, well, I guess this is what I'm going to do now. Um, and that kind of brought me out of a funk. And I wrote a bunch of songs, and they connected with people. Um, and I was like, well, I can connect with people this way, too. Um, and then I stumbled into voiceover. And I was like, oh, wait, it doesn't matter what I look like. I can just voice whatever character. I, this OK. And then I go to a convention, and people are like, I love Vash. I was like, what, really? Oh, that's awesome. And then I have a connection to that person. So. Really, for me, my entire life is just, how can I connect with every single one of you, you know? And so, and it's through these various different mediums, you know, um, from you know acting to music and and whatever. Um, else. And then sometimes I just start rambling. But um, but anyways, yeah, I don't I don't know. I, I went off on a complete tangent, I think, on <laughs> your question. But for me, it, it it's just how how can I connect? Because we're all the same, you know. I'm no different from you. You know, I maybe have a different career, but I'm the same as you, you know. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Big fan of yours, uh, your work on uh, Code Geass as nice. Lelouch. Loved it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, specifically pertaining to that show, I was curious. The character does a lot of, like, acting himself um, mm. in a lot of scenes, but also you see him in his own personal life. Did you enjoy, when you were voicing the character, did you enjoy more the grandiose moments as Zero with the speeches or the slice of life, I guess, high school type of normal moments? It's interesting. Um, because in the beginning, I, I, it was easier for me and maybe that's why I gravitated, like I was more comfortable with like the slice of life stuff, you know, with the sister and that kind of stuff, because I was, I, it was easier for me to relate to. Yeah. Um, whenever he had to be really way over the top, you know, which was the direction from the original Japanese director, was like he's got to be way over the top when when he's, uh, you know, zero. Mm -hmm. um, and that at first was a little strange to me, um, but then it, it eventually I, it it kind of just grew on me and I was like, well, this is, this is it. This is what he does, you know, and this is how he, you know, does it. It's, and, um, and so eventually it was just like, I just liked all of who he was, you know, and, and, and then, and see, I, I didn't get to read ahead or figure out anything ahead. And they, you know, uh, Kevin who had directed didn't want that as well. He wanted me to experience all the stuff at the same time. So, you know, when we get to the end of, you know, season one or all the things that are happening, you know, just throughout the first season, I'm like, I experienced them right then and there. And it was like, oh, okay. And so each time that something happened, somebody died or he, you know, hurt somebody or whatever, it was like, I could feel it like, whoa, this is fresh. Um, and then, of course, throughout the second season and the way it ended, I didn't know. And I'm like, okay, this is <laughs> really, really hard, but I'm going to get through it. Yeah. Um, but I loved everything about it. You know, um, but at the, at the beginning, it was a little harder for me to get into zero mode. Um, and, but then I just remember the original Japanese director, his note was like Phantom of the Opera. Very over the top and grandiose in those moments. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to trust that, you know, go with it. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thanks for watching. There's supposed to be more, by the way. Did you watch the movie? Yeah? Have you guys seen the movie, the Code Geass movie? Who has not seen Code Geass? 
All right, okay. It's a pretty good one. You should check it out before the new stuff starts coming. <laughs> Hi, uh, my question, and both of you can answer, is what was your favorite voice line you guys have done? Well, this, this is more for him. I'm just the moderator. But thank you for thinking I'm a voice actor. <laughs> favorite voice, fa favorite line? Yeah, like voice line or like section that you've done. Oh, gosh. Um, I don't know. Uh, well, let's see. Ichigo. Um, I don't know. Let me think about this. There's a lot of moments I like. Um, well, I, I like, you know, with Rukia and her terrible drawings. Um, <laughs> And uh, let's see, Ichigo, what was it? Rukia, why do your drawings suck so bad? <laughs> um, there's a, I have it on my phone. I should post it at some point. But there's, a, there's one where she comes out of the closet holding this thing that she drew, and she's, like, so proud of it, and he's doing his homework, and he's like, what? He's like, uh-huh, and he, she's talking to him. He's like, oh, yeah. Uh huh. Wow. But it's just all like her, and he's like, uh huh, ah. It's so funny. Um, but th those moments were pretty fun. Um, I can't think of a line that. Um, well, I guess in Devil. Did you play? Let's see. What shows are you familiar with? Are you familiar with DMC Five? No. I'm more like a, I've done um, like Persona Five and like. Persona Don Five. Gone. I wasn't in that one. Yeah, Four. Don Gone Rogue. Okay. I have seen I've seen the entirety of 4. I've just bought 4 for the computer because they adapted it. Now. Oh, yeah, right. And then I also like um, Power Rangers and stuff like that. Dungan Rope, uh, you said as well, right? Mm -hmm. The Incomplete series for that. Oh, the which one? The Complete series of Dungan Rope, I've seen the entirety of. Well, with Hajime, I just know um, a few things like. Um, no, that's wrong! <laughs> um, <laughs> I remember doing that. <laughs> um, actually, I remember Rantaro stuff a little bit more, but he didn't last that long, unfortunately. <laughs> he was fun. Am I ruining it for people that haven't played it? Um, Power Rangers, let's see. I'm a frog. Oh, you just took it. I was going to do it. <laughs> do it. You have to be Dulcia then. Okay. Um, Adam, what's wrong? I'm a frog. Like the one you kissed to get a prince. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he was pretty awesome, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Thank you. So, first off, you're probably tired of hearing this at this point, but I loved your work in Persona 4. It's nice. one of my favorite games. You yeah. racing Adachi and Narukami is great. <laughs> nice. And I, especially the anime, I loved how deadpan... Uh, Narukami sound sometimes. He, on, he honestly kind of made the anime for he, me. He was pretty funny. No, he really anime, was. Yeah. He's great. But I was going to ask so you mentioned earlier that when you uh, voice voice lines, you're in like a room by yourself. You don't have like other actors with you. Right. And in I was going to ask. In most cases, yeah. In anime, yeah. especially. Because mm. I was going to ask um, when it comes to that, like conversations between like two characters, for example, uh, how do you like make a conversation sound like natural when you're not? present with the other actor, if that makes sense? Uh, I try to get as much information from my director as possible. Mm. Um, and, uh, and depending on the director, sometimes they'll even read the line before. Um, not always. Um, in most cases they don't, but sometimes they do. Um, and then, you know, if, if I have it in front of me where I can see the other character's line, I, I just imagine how they would say it, mm. you know? Uh, and then I respond accordingly you know um and then i hope for the best <laughs> and uh and and sometimes you know you get called in for a pickup and and it's because like well they said it this way instead or we changed the line so now you need to say you know selfish instead of self-centered or whatever you know mm -hmm. um so yeah you just kind of hope for the best it's all cold reading that's the other crazy thing about anime that i think most people don't know or anime and a lot of video games is you don't get the script ahead of time so you don't get to like go home and read it and memorize it and then come in like you're acting, you know, for camera or whatnot. Well, some games you do, like Devil May Cry, we, we got it ahead of time, so I got to plan all my stuff. But most cases, especially in anime, it's a cold read. You go in there not really knowing what's going on, 
uh, and then you try to get all that information from your director. Um, if you didn't do the research, research ahead of time, which sometimes I try to do, um, or I try to do all the time, but I, I don't always find it. Um, like Zora and Black Clover. Do you watch Black Clover? Uh, I have a couple uh, friends that enjoy it. So that was one where I, I had to look it up, and I couldn't find anything <laughs> except for a picture of the character. And I'm like, okay. And so I just imagined what that would sound like. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't have any lines, so I was just making stuff up. Um, and then when I went in, um, Chris, who was directing, was like, mm, maybe not so much that. And so I had to like find a place because I got used to it. I'm like, no, I really liked it, you know. Um, and so I had to like find a place to, where we both agreed where it, it would all work, you know. Um, and so we found a spot that was like, yeah, right there. Let's keep it in that pocket. Um, That's interesting. I was gonna ask uh, that what you talked about earlier about like you don't get ahead of time. Like, is there a reason for that? Yeah, you don't get scripts ahead of time so that you don't leak it um. and other people find out what you're working on, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Of course. I know it would be nice to get it ahead of time because you could plan and figure out and just have all these thoughts going in your head. But at a certain point, doing it for so long, you, you kind of you get there, you know. You get used to it. Like, if you want to be a voice actor and if you want to be an anime voice actor, I would go through and find a bunch of scripts and just start cold reading. And just, get, okay, if I just got the script right now, what would I do in this character and how would I, and just try to create it right there, right then and there. And then try another script, you know, because um, that's what it's like. It's cold reads. Um, hi there. Hey. Uh, um, so I'm not. I'm not really with the video game side of your characters. I did play the first Devil May Cry, but not the more recent ones. Mm. Um, I haven't watched Danganronpa, but I remember watching Power Rangers when I was a lot younger, and so that's where I first knew you, and then I recently started Bleach, and I'm around episode 60, oh. and my question is related to Bleach. When you got the script, like eventually when you got the script for the scene where Yorichi reveals herself as a human, what was your, <laughs> what was your thought process on that? <clears throat> well, again, that was like right then and there. I'm, I'm in the booth and I'm like, wait a second, what? <laughs> you know, and, uh, and you know, I, I'm pretty sure Wendy was directing at the time. She's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so, you know, you just do it. And then it's like, all right, this is, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so a lot of that, I just found out as I was working on it. Um, now, I did, there was, I did go through, and uh, I, I cheated a little bit, because in the very beginning, I had a different director that I felt like um, didn't quite understand. Like, I felt like I was hearing things different than what my director wanted, and I'm like, I don't know that that's what should be happening, but I just did what I was told, and then... And then I would get called in for pickups, and we're picking up those things. And I'm like, oh, so I was right. And so I went through and I watched. I watched 60 episodes straight through. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I found them on YouTube. You know, I'm like, <laughs> and I couldn't stop. I was like, oh my gosh, is he going to save her? What's going to happen? You know. Um, so I got through 60 episodes. And I was like, oh, that, that's a pretty good show. I like it. Um, and then so then I really had like a really good knowledge. And so when I went in again with this certain director. Um, and the director would tell me, you know, this is what's going on in the scene. I would say, well, actually, that's not what's going on in the scene. And I would tell them what's going on in the scene. And they're like, how did you pick that up? It's like, oh, you know, uh, the Japanese is saying this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have a photographic memory, but, like, if I see it, and, in, in, like, because I'm, I'm seeing it as an actor, so I'm, like, acting out these parts. So I, it's almost that way. So I can say, this is what, it, and they look it up. Oh, you're right. That's what they said in this. You know, and I, I'm like, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And so uh, I, I cheated a little bit. Uh, eventually that director moved on to other things. And, you know, um, I got, you know, Wendy came in there and she knew exactly what was going on. Um, and then eventually Susie was directing, who you guys don't know, but she's awesome. But um, yeah, so I just, I basically get, I got to experience it. Even, even Hollow Ichigo, I didn't even know. I'm like in there and I'm like, I see like, oh, it says white Ichigo in the script. I'm like, who's white Ichigo? <laughs> <laughs> and Wendy's like, you are. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and, and so, yeah, they, they play, you know, 
Haluichio, and he's, he, and his, his tone is a little different, and they've got like some flange going on on his voice, and I was like, all right, well, I've got to separate these characters a little bit, uh, so I came up with a place for him, you know, who am I? <laughs> you know, and then I was like, this is where he's going to live, he's going to be a bit more controlled, uh, he's, you know, like, whereas Ichigo is a street kid, I guess, street punk sort of, you know, um, he would say like talking instead of talking, whereas I'm like, okay, well, how long would you go would say talking? You know, he would use the full ING. Um, so I kind of separated the characters there, and in their fight noises, I separated them a bit. But um, yeah, so I just, on the spot. So Is it all right if I ask one more question? Sure. Uh, what was your, when you were reading the script for, I don't know if you had this on pickup, but when you were reading the script for the speech that Haluichigo gives, what was, like, how did you get into the tone of, like, how, how like God complexy uh, Hollow Ichigo is. <laughs> Again, um, it was just right then, right then and there. Like I saw the words on the page, and I go, "All right," and then I, I just start going. There's no time. There's no time for you to. It's not like I could take the script and then go sit in a corner and study it for <laughs> ten minutes and come back and then get ready to go. No, it was like as soon as we we scroll up. Or turn the page at that time. It's like you turn the page and it's like, oh, Hollow Ichigo says like a paragraph of stuff. And so I look at it, I try to memorize it, and then I go, okay. And then we start going and I try to catch those flaps, you know. Um, and so it's, it's, it's that quick. You don't have a whole lot of time. So that's, that's what I'm talking about with cold reading is you just have to be able to pull it all together as quickly as possible, you know. Um, and then hope that you get it right, you know. Um, uh, and, you know, hopefully, hopefully I did. <laughs> um, he's a great character, though. Yeah. Once I got to him, though, I mean, but I did see a bit of it because I watched the 60 episodes. So there were certain things in there that I was like, oh, I can't wait to get in there and play that, <laughs> you know. Um, there's a lot of that, you know. And there's some stuff that I already know about Demon Slayer that I'm like, I can't wait till we get to do some of that. Um, but uh, just, just kind of, you know. So I cheat a little bit. <laughs> I cheat more than others, I think. I try to find out as much as I can before going in, or as soon as I know I'm going to be playing a character, I try to do as much research as possible. Um, or I ask fans, so like, hey, do you know this show? Cool, tell me about it. <laughs> what about this character? I'm not voicing them or anything, but... <laughs> I did my drummer, and I'm going off on tangent again, but I, at, at that time, my drummer watched a lot of anime. Um, and so I'd show up, sometimes I'd get there a little bit early before rehearsal, and he was watching, he was watching Bleach, and he was like, oh, you should try to get on this show, it's so awesome, and I was like, yeah, I think I just auditioned for that, <laughs> um, but it was like, it was like constantly, it was like, he saw like Wolf's Rain, you know, and he's like, this show's so cool, man, you should try to get on it, I was like, hey, I just booked that one, um, which was kind of funny, he was like my good luck charm, and I was like, watch more anime, because maybe I'll get to be in it. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, you don't need to keep standing there. <laughs> Thanks for your question, though. Thank you. Okay, so I didn't initially have a question until someone brought up Ichigo and Nier with comparison, right? And I guess one of the things I wanted to, like, I was wondering about, because Ichigo and Nier are very similar people, and, well, there was analysis on the post-DMC4 manga, Deadly Fortune, saying Nier is, is, was initially supposed to be named for Dan, after following the... Um, Dante's Inferno theme, but they said Rodan was, it gave, too, um, it sounded too smart on Nero. Mm. And then I realized, like, yeah, Nero does give off a bit of an airhead vibe. No offense. He's, he's a bit naive, yeah. Yeah, and then so does Ichigo. So at what point are you voicing them and acting as them? Did you kind of realize that they are both airheads? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Well... I didn't think that, <laughs> and uh, let me explain. Okay, so I just tried to play them like me. <laughs> so that means I'm the airhead. Um, I basically tried to play Ichigo. I tried to play N Nero like as me, like if I were in those worlds. And yeah, that's all I did. So, so I am the airhead that caused that. Uh, maybe more so from Nero because I got to change and ad lib lines left and right, you know? Like 90% of the lines that we had in the last movie, I, I adjusted or changed them all. 
um, because they didn't either feel right or sound right or were translated strangely, you know, or didn't make enough sense to me or didn't hit home. Um, so there was quite a bit that I was just like, can I say this? And they're like, uh, okay. Um, so, yeah, I'm the airhead. I am the airhead you're looking for. It's just there were two major instances. And one of them when he's fighting Burial, and he stops Burial's sword with his own sword. After that fight, he says, I don't know what I am. And it's like, you don't think you're at least not human? <laughs> that never gave it away. <laughs> but I thought, uh. There's a lot of similarities. Yeah, yeah, because they both even have like this other spirit kind of inside them at, yeah, at a certain point. Yeah, yeah, yeah there, there's a lot there. there but they are, it's, they're just me. <laughs> thanks for making fun of me. Thanks, thanks for calling me an airhead. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my friend. And that's we actually friend? met through, yeah. like, our being nerds of Bleach. Like, she was, like, <laughs> in the classroom with me, and she's like, wait, I'm trying to finish this chapter of this manga I'm reading. And I don't know why. I turned around, and I was like, Bleach? And she was like, yeah! And we just started kind Oh, of that's <laughs> awesome. So you didn't even know that you were both... Into it. That's cool. But um, I have two questions. One would be, um, so since you you already know what happens like in Bleach, pretty much, is there like hopefully it won't spoil too much. Is there like a specific scene or like I guess moment that you're like excited for? Like that would totally spoil it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll go back. I'll go back a little bit, though, because when I first started to uh, voice the character, there was a moment where he was, like, in the woods, and I don't remember. It was, like, one of the earlier episodes um, within the first ten, I think, um, and he is in the woods or something. He's thinking about his mom, and he's kind of tears up a little bit, and there's, mm. there's, there's something that I felt like I really connected to him in that moment, um, and that's what I wanted to find out more of. Um, but right. I, but they didn't explore that at all. And I'm like, what's going on? What yeah. about his mom? Um, and so I would like to see that. I see. Okay. <laughs> and my second question. So the characters that I'm very familiar with you with, mostly anime, apart from Ichigo, are like Makoto and Sasori and Giyu. And they're like, especially Makoto, he's such like a kind character. And then all of a sudden I was watching Uramichi on Nissan and... <laughs> Kikaku comes in and was like, you son of a... And he just starts cussing. <laughs> and I was like... And my friend was like, that's Sean Young Bosch. I'm like, that is. He's a totally different character, yeah. Yeah, and I was wondering, like, is there a specific character or, like, element you were, like, trying to channel when you... <laughs> <laughs> when you voice him? Because there was also times where he would just talk normally, but he sounds like he's about to murder someone. <laughs> yeah, like, he's like, yeah, everything's fine. Like, sit down. And I'm like... Okay, it's great. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, uh, that's just, it's just fun. Well, everybody's been there. Everybody has felt that, you know? And so the only difference is in that kind of character is I get to live there a little bit longer, you know? Um, and then sometimes you get to make fun of it a little bit, you know, to make it obvious, you know, or whatever you're saying. It's, got a, it's like there's that undertone of like, yeah, he wants to kill someone. Um, you know, it's like, mm -hmm, right? Um, but that's what's fun about it, you know, is, is trying to find that and, and, and see if you can hear that it, it, through the character. Um, but again, it, which, whatever character I play, I have to find a way to relate to that character. Like, how can I be that character? If I can't feel that way, then I, if I don't believe it, then you're not going to believe it. Um, so even with uh, Makoto, it's, or Makoto, or however you want to pronounce him, um, I, I love that character, you know? Um, and... I have sisters and, and a brother, and so there, there's certain things in the relationship that I'm like, oh, this is, yeah, I, f I feel this character. This, I could be this person, you know, um, and I've been this person. So, but with those kind of characters, there's certain tropes, you know, so they, they stay that way. They might have an arc, you know, they adjust or change a little bit, but they're still like, you, you kind of know in a nutshell, he's, he's a friend. Um, you know, and so the guy, ah, he's losing it a little bit. He's on the verge of losing it, and, but it's, uh, but he's always on the verge of losing it. So, you know, you just find those places and you get to live there longer. That's what's fun about acting is that you get to play those things. You get to live there a little bit longer, you know? Um, yeah. Thank you. No problem. Of course. That's funny. I didn't, I didn't realize that was out already. <laughs> so I don't know what I could talk about <laughs> until somebody mentions it. Hello. I have returned. Hello. Uh, so what'd you I, forget? I, it was, it's a vash, it's kind of like the Lee Louch uh, question that was 
asked earlier, but about Vash, because uh, I love Trigun. Uh, but so, which part of Vash do you like playing? Did you like playing most? Like the happy-go-lucky, hey, let's have fun, and like completely airheaded Vash, or like the serious, or like the serious, oh God, he looks like he's going to kill me, Vash. Uh. So you called me an airhead again. <laughs> <laughs> that may or may not have been intentional. Um, That's a lot of name calling. I know, man. You guys are so mean. Uh, <laughs> I'm not coming back. Um, Vash was fun. All right, so Vash... Um, you know, the, I, did, I did really like the goofiness, you know, and, and the airheadedness that so he, I, he portrayed. So um but it was something I felt like that he was putting on, you know? I he was a bit too. goofy, whatever. He really does like donuts. Um, but if he needed to, you know, shoot and hit his target or whatever, he could. He was, he was that good. Um, and so I really liked that aspect of it. And I remember it was... I can't remember which episode it was, but there was, you know, there, he's, I think he, it's like he's carrying the girls or something, and he's tired, and he goes, and, then, and no, nobody's in town, and then he goes into the, the, the saloon or the bar or whatever, and there's a bunch of dead people or something. Oh, uh, yeah, is that the and then, bar episode? Yeah, and then he walks back out, and they're like, hey, what's wrong? He's like, nothing, you know, and he just acts like nothing, right? And he's just <laughs> playing it off, and I was like, oh, so he's putting it on. And, and that's when I was like, so, so, okay, this is who he is, like, he he plays it a bit more over the top and goofy and like he doesn't get it, you know, um, but he really does. And he's, because of whatever it is, protecting the girls, protecting somebody else or protecting himself. Um, and so, you know, that was the moment that, that, I, that, I, that it dawned on me for him. You know, that's who he was. Um, so I forgot the question, but in playing that, I just, uh, yeah, I just kind of, that I, once I lock in, I'm like, that's, uh, okay, I get it. So as far as anything, I don't know. I, I like playing him serious, but definitely being goofy, and that, that was just more fun, you know. All right, love and peace. That's right. <laughs> uh, so what is your favorite weapon from the Devil May Cry games? Oh, goodness. How do you prefer to murder people? I know, right? <laughs> it doesn't um, have to be one of Nero's either. It could just a weapon. Oh. Uh, you know what? I I don't know. I think the his the Red Queen. I just because that was the you know I was playing in the game and I got to fake it and all that stuff. You know, and I'm like ah, I don't know. It, it was a little more special, I think. Um, and then. Yeah, because I got, the, I don't, you maybe you don't know this, but I did the motion capture for the, the games. Yeah. So I got to go to Japan, and so we had like basically like a, a cardboard, duct taped version of it, and it was like you swung it around. Actually, I had to swing it around with my left hand, which was awkward at first, but I got so used to it, you know, I'm like, oh, okay. Um, but yeah, I guess so. I guess maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Sure. I just want to first off by saying that you are by far one of my favorite voice actors ever. Like, when I first heard you in Code Geass, it's like, your performance in that was like amazing, especially the part where Lelouch kills his parents, and the part when he says, <laughs> spoilers, <laughs> sorry. All of you guys that didn't see it yet, don't worry, it's not a big I, point in it. I, I, I guess I can take that off my list. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. You should still watch it. Yeah, All right. it's good, really, it's good. <laughs> the part where you said, over my dead body, that just sent chills down my spine. <laughs> Seriously. But anyway, time for my question. From a fan's uh, perspective, you think Lelouch did anything wrong? Oh. From, wait, from a fan's perspective? Yeah, viewer's like perspective. Like a viewer, okay. Uh, wait, well, I guess that depends on the viewer. Right? Uh, everyone would have a different opinion on that. Um, if I were, I guess, if I were just a viewer, I mean, I, I, I just tell you my perspective. Yeah, I think he did some things wrong. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but he did have a purpose in it, and there was a reason for a lot of the things that he did do, you know? Um, and, and you find that out, you know, why he's... Done, done it the way he's done it um, at the end of the second season. 
But um, yeah, I mean, <coughs> maybe some other people think you know differently. But uh, yeah, of course, I think he did some things that were wrong. I I like to say that just to like mess with people. When I at the end of it, I'll just say he was just trying to make his sister happy. That's it. Ultimately, yeah. <laughs> Strange way of doing it. <laughs> anyway, thanks. That's it. All right. Okay. All right. Hey. Well, thank you so much, you guys. Thanks for coming. Thank you very much, everybody. Please give a big round of applause to Mr. Johnny Onquash.